praising the Lord. Amen. Amen.
God. You can get your healing, your deliverance while you're yet praising God. That's why it's important to praise God. That's why you don't want to miss the praise service. Amen. going to do and uh, if you haven't already put your prayer request in the air put it in the air amen put that prayer request in the air you can see amen i'm going to bring the man of god i'm not going to preach this morning i got another man of god that's going to preach and teach this word of god amen he's 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 blessed of the lord highly blessed of the lord i praise god for it but today i just want to just thank you for all the your service especially for those that worked at Ronald McDonald House yesterday, yes. uh, thank God Amen. for you. God bless you. Amen. 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 Give them a hand for God. Amen. Amen. And I want to thank God for those that went to the prison yesterday. Amen. Amen. Praise him. Church is all about service and giving. Amen. And when you don't give to someone else, it feels like you're a fish out of water. Amen. Amen. And so we have to remind ourselves, for those that have never gone to the prison, see Sister Carol Enoch, Minister Carol Enoch, sign up for that prison service. Amen. Amen. We want to get our, our women's prison back on our on track, so that's to come. But if you have it, please, please, I, I guarantee you, the prison service is one of the services that builds my faith every time. Every time it builds my faith. That's one service in particular that builds my faith. But I want to just share a quick testimony of something that happened yesterday in the prison. Um, the, the choir had already uh, shared and, and song, and there was a gentleman on the front row. And normally we don't let people interrupt our services because we keep the flow going, right? But he stood up before we could stop him, and he stood up, and he said, I just got to say something. Because on August the 8th, 2017, you all came to Hamilton. He was in the main unit. And then he said there was a little skinny lady that ministered, and she was getting ready to say something, and she said God told her to change her testimony. She changed her testimony. He said, on that day, I got delivered. And he was talking about his minister Fleming, Regina Fleming. Wow. Yes. Amen. Yes. When he shared that testimony, it confirmed even the more why God has called us to go to the prisons and institutions. Yeah. Yeah. He's still saved. He's still delivered. Yeah. Although he's behind bars, incarcerated, but he's still living a life for Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And that's why we go to him. That's why we go. So I just want to share and praise God uh, for that testimony. Amen. God bless you. I'm going to bring up Minister Joshua Harmon.
I wanted to talk about being the salt of the earth. And as I was studying, as I was studying last night, not last night, but however, as I was studying, I was wondering what does it mean to be the salt of the earth? What I found, that's where we're going to end up. What I found out, to be the salt of the earth means literally to be a living sacrifice. What I, what I found to be true, as I've studied the word of God, after God spoke to Moses, and gave him the book of Deuteronomy. God, not that he stopped speaking, everything else from Joshua to Revelation explains what God had already done. The Bible says in Genesis that the tree of life was already in the garden. We know this speaks of Jesus. He had already written the plan, but he sent prophets to explain and to further explain what had already happened. Then he had to send Jesus to say, hey, we missed the point, you missed the point. Why I gave the law? Why I spoke to you? Why I gave you these things? You missed the point. There's a passage of scripture where the Pharisees call themselves being smart. They were smarter than Jesus. They say, what's the greatest commandment? He said, oh, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. When we go back, Deuteronomy is the fifth book of the Torah. That's in some of the last chapters. They say, but love me with all your heart and with all your soul. Before I get started, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm old school. I would like to challenge us today. We live in a society where we, we live on our phone. I'm going to raise both of my hands. I live on my phone. It's easy to pick it up and stay on it for four hours. I just want to challenge you. When we come into the house of God, if, if you're a minister, can you just raise your hand, minister Ellen? You see all these people? If you ain't got no paper Bible, like the one you got to open, Tell somebody, yeah, get it for you, right? Amen. Because so many distractions come on my phone, right? When I sit down to read the word of God, I, my mama called me, my wife called me, my sister called me. I need to check Facebook real quick. Do you really? No, it's a distraction. Why? Because when Jesus, after he did 40 day fast, the enemy coming to him, he said, he, he tempted him. And his response was always the word of God. So the devil know if I can keep you from the word of God, then salvation is, won't be brought to you, right? We have a great pastor here. We have great leadership here. Amen. Pastor Ford can preach. Y'all can tell Pastor Ford is a great pastor. God. Pastor Ford can preach until he is blue in the face. And Pastor Ford is a dark-skinned man, so it's going to take him a long time. <laughs> I mean, it's going to take him a long time to get a blue. It's going to take him a long time. But, but he can preach. And preach. You've been preaching for 43, 44, how many? 30, 38 years. He's been preaching for 38 years. The Bible says, Mark, a perfect man. And watch his way. Perfect and wet. Things of God. The experiences that Pastor Cora talk about and the prayer group talk about, it's only one way to get them. They can't do it for us. He cannot do it for us as much. He might want it for us, but he cannot do it for us. Amen. Amen. I want to read something about Yahweh. When I last preached, Moses did the call from God. He said, Lord, who do I say? Sent, sent me to you. He said, I am. And, and I want to pick up from right there because I want to encourage you about Yahweh. This is, this is who gave us the commandment. This is who sent Jesus Christ. This is the relationship that we need to be restored in the earth. I am who I am, he said. Thus you will say to the children of Israel, I am sent you. I am simply means to be self-sufficient, self-existence, and immediate presence. God's presence is not contingent on how I feel. All right. It's hard sometimes, it's very hard to fight through the woes and the worries of life. God's existence is not contingent upon anyone else. His plans are not contingent upon any circumstance. His prom he promised that he will be what he will be, that he will be eternally constant, the eternally constant God. He stands ever present, unchangeable, completely sufficient in himself, 
to do what he wills to and accomplish what he wills to accomplish. God name is Yahweh. He exists. That's what I said the last time. To add on to that, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, you don't have to turn there. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Me and my older brother often have a conversation. Where did God's perfect will and permissible will intersect for our life? I'm going to be honest with you. We have talked and we have this conversation often. I don't know. I can't answer that for you. But the first part is, is, that, is, is that God is God. No matter what the circumstance is, God is God. So in this scripture, in Isaiah 58, 89, it talks about God's sovereignty. This is why he said, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. There's a picture that's bigger. Pastor Corey said something one time when he was preaching. And I don't know how long ago it was, so I'm not going to put a year on it. But he said, if the gospel you preach cannot be preached in a third world country, then it's not the gospel. All right. So then what I'm saying is, we, not, not we about faith, but Western civilization seems to serve God from a Western mindset. Right. We seem to only know God from what's going on in America. God is in charge of the universe. God is in charge of the world, right? That's not to say that he's not concerned about your, your life, because he is. But we have to think bigger. We have to think globally about God, because that is who he is. That is who he is responsible for. It speaks to God's sovereignty. This is what... This, 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 uh, if you ever want to know where I get when I study, it's, it's called um, God Questions. It's a really good website. Really good website. You can put a scripture in there. You can put a quote in there. It'll break it down for you. Listen to this. Yahweh is sovereign. God has the ability to do anything. To take action and intervene in any situation. But he often chooses to act indirectly or to allow certain things for reasons of his own. His will is further in any case. The most tragic things that happen. He can work all things, not some things. He can work all things, right? He can work all things, all things. The good, the bad, and the ugly, the things that we don't understand, he can work them. Yes, yes. God's sovereignty means that he is absolutely in authority and unrestricted in his supremacy. Everything that happens at the very least, the result of God's permissive will. This holds true even in certain specific things are not what he would prefer. Meaning what? When Adam and Eve is in the garden, God did not prefer for them to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. However they did, I can work it for your good though. Because I'm God. Oh right? God. I can work it for your yeah, good. Because yeah, I'm God. Yeah, yeah. That's not what he wanted. As we go through and we live our life. Yes. When, okay. When I was living a life of sin, he worked it for my good. Yes, it don't mean I'm happy with no. it. It don't mean this is what I want. No. Huh? But I can work it for your good. Because today I'm delivered, set free. Yeah. Huh? Ain't that something? Yeah. That's the God we serve. The right of God to allow mankind's free choice is just as necessary for true sovereignty and his ability to enact his will, wherever and however he chooses. Again, me and my brother have literally had this conversation for hours. I just don't know. And I won't sit up here and try to answer it for you. That's the part where we simply, that's where we blindly trust God. Now, somebody, some people will say, let, 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 me, let me be clear. God is a thought-thinking being. All right. He made us thought-thinking. 99.9% .9 of this walk is discipline. Read it, prayer, study. Yes. The other 1% is supernatural, unexplained. I cannot explain this other than it was God. It was God. Uh -huh. There's no explanation because I don't have one for you. Uh -huh. 
when I was eight, 17, I got sick because of my disobedience. Now, this is my testimony. I know what happened in my life. Yes, sir. Go to the hospital. My heart is what the doctors call fluttering. <laughs> the monitor was reading that 400 beats per minute. Right. But I'm talking to you. I'm, I'm talking, we're talking, we're having a conversation. There's no explanation for that. One, one day, it was, it kept doing it, it was like at, my heart was like 300, 350. They had to stop my heart and shock me like six times. There's no, this, this was going on for days. Yeah. This is going on for days. There's no explanation except for it was God. Because what's supposed to happen is your heart's supposed to stop, right? And nobody heart can sustain that, right? Romans 12, Romans 12, Romans 12, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Uh, now I know we all can quote it, we all have heard it. You, I'm sorry, you give me a few minutes. Okay. Listen, listen to this. This is my scripture today. God wants to be a living sacrifice. Now, being a living sacrifice, sometimes we will we look and we look at scripture and it's, it's almost as if we don't understand that when God had precepts, not concepts, see a concept is abstract, right? It's not, you're not, it's, it's kind of there, but it's really not there. God had precepts, it's concrete. This is what he means. You don't have concepts, you have a precept. This is what he said, Romans 1, I mean, I'm sorry, Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. A living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Sacrifice. Destruction or surrender of something for the sake of something else. Now, I, I will say this, be, be honest. Reading your word and praying and fasting, it is going to be a sacrifice. But the most high is asking for the sacrifice to benefit us. Now, we say that we don't understand sacrifice. I'm going to show you how we do. It doesn't matter how tired I am. It doesn't matter how I feel in my body. When it's time for me to go to work tomorrow, I'm going to work. Why? Because why is the sacrifice? Because I understand the benefit of it. I sacrifice now. In two weeks, they're going to have a check ready. Right? But it's a sacrifice. Okay, okay. When's the last time, right, you really took a vacation? Somebody said, call up work. No, can't do that. Can't call up that job. No. Why? Because we understand the benefit, we understand the sacrifice that we make. Two things that we understand as adults or even going into adulthood, we understand finances and relationships. We, we get it. We get it, right? The, 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 the second thing you need for a sacrifice, you're going to need an altar. The place of sacrifice, which means a slaughter, to slaughter an animal, usually for a sacrifice. The sacrificial system was at the focal point of pre-Israelite and, and Israelite system of worship. The sacrifice and the sacrifice meal were used to solemnize a covenant or treaty and to resemble a positive relationship between two parties, right? So, on the altar, you give the sacrifice. Yes. The purpose of the sacrifice is to say, hey, God, we got a relationship. Right? But see, it's two. It's, it's twofold. It's twofold. It's a covenant. It's a true marriage. When I got married, I said my wedding vows, Pastor Corey gave me a ring. The purpose of the ring is so when I touch it, when I feel it, brother, you marry. Yep. Not that that just don't mean for cheating, right? It don't mean just for that. It means it's your wife. Uh -huh. And the scriptures say, husbands, love your wife. As Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Oh, sound like sacrifice. We understand that. We know exactly what he is saying when he says this. 
right? We understand this in friendship uh, relationships. We understand this in romantic relationships, right? I'm giving of myself, right? And so in return, what I'm expecting is, is for you to give me the same. Because what I did for you was out of a pure heart. Yes. Right, and so then when the relationship doesn't go the way I want it to go, friendship, romantic, or plutonic, whatever, the first thing I told that, that, that sometimes people say, Oh, but you ain't do nothing with this. The first thing I told about this, but I did it for you. Why? Because you understand it came from my heart. I wasn't looking for anything in return. I did it simply because you're my friend and because I care about you, because I want the relationship. Now, when it comes to God, it's no different. He put it inside of us. This is how we know. Yes, yes. We know we know what he's saying. Yeah. We don't always want to do I don't always want to do it. Though. I don't always want to do it though. Yeah. But I know what he means. Yes. Because when God made us, he said, let us create man in our image, in our likeness. That wasn't just speaking to what I am physical. It was speaking to what I am spiritually. God deals with us, he deals with us spiritually. The reality of it is the physical is temporary. I, we, we, come on, we know this. Yes. Yeah. But what we cannot see will last and endure forever. Yes. Forever. Yes. Yes. God, this speaks to God. He's eternal. He's eternal. Listen, listen, listen. Listen. I'm going to try to, I don't want to be too long because I got a lot of notes. Because right, I wanted to talk about us being the salt of the earth and, and it turned into, okay, no, I want you to be the sacrifice. That, that's, that's what it is, it's the sacrifice that I want. Sacrifice, he says, which is your reasonable service? Okay. You ever talk to somebody, when I was younger, and, 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 and I had the way I thought things should go, my mom would say, Josh, be reasonable. What was, she, what was she really saying? Think about what you're trying to do or what you want to do. Not a good decision, brother. Not, we're not doing that. He says, this is your reasonable service. What he's saying is, listen, what, what, what God is saying is, it's your fault. It's the mindfulness, right? He's not saying it's the least you can do. What, what God is saying is, it's the thing that you can think and make a conscious and a conscious effort. And uh, you have to will yourself to serve God. You have to will yourself to read, pray, and fast. We will, listen, again, when we understand jobs and those relationships, we will ourselves. I don't like the way I look, but I'm willing myself. Listen, even to God, you know, this is why God is God, right? Because he treats us like a parent treats a child. It doesn't matter what that child do. He wills himself to love us. I don't like the actions, but I will myself. What God expects in return is for you to will yourself to love him. How do we do it? Through the word of God. The, the, what, what, so what happens is, right, we're in the garden, and we need a fruit, right? We have a covenant with Adam, then we have a covenant with Noah, right? And then after Noah, um, we have a covenant uh, with Isaac, right? Now we get ready to get into Isaac, Jacob, right? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, he had a covenant with all of these. Just keep in mind, the law hasn't been given yet. Right. However, we don't have Israel until we have Jacob because Israel is Jacob's sons. So then what God do is he say, listen, I want you to be a people to myself. And in the book of Leviticus, he gives out sacrifice. Mm -hmm. What we see in Leviticus chapter two is, he says, anytime you give a grain offering, you offer it with salt. Uh oh, here we go. This is why he said, if you don't offer the grain, I want salt with it. Yep. Now, God did not give them the sacrificial ceremonies. He did not give them the blood, the sacrifice. He did not give them the things just to simply give them something to do or keep them busy. That was not his purpose. His purpose, going back to what an altar is, when we, this is why we get married at the altar. We say, hey, we're in covenant with one another. This is solemn. It's just between me and you. This is just between me and you. So when he have them come to the altar day after day, and then once a year for the remissions of sin, he tries to say, hey, remember Israel, we have a covenant together. Remember what I did, right? I want you to remember the things I did, how I delivered you, how I set you free. Yes. This is the problem with it. It wasn't from their heart. Now, 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 how is it that we expect people to, right, give of themselves to us from our heart? 
But when it comes to our faith in Jesus Christ, if I come in here, and I'm not, it's not about the feeling. This is the hard part, but you have to speak to your mind because I, my mind speaks to me. I know your mind speaks to you. I'm going to lift my hands because God is worthy. It's not because I ain't got enough money to do X, Y, and Z or because I'm feeling bad in my body. It's because you are God. That's why I lift my hands, right? right. I'm going to say, Lord, right. I love you because you are God, yes. right? I'm yes. doing this because simply because you are, simply because I want to be a right standing with you. L listen to this. This is what he says. This is what I was referencing earlier. You don't have to turn here. And Deuteronomy 4, 5, and 6. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You will love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words, which I command you today, will be in your heart. Your heart is the altar that God wants. My heart is the altar that God wants. Deuteronomy 10, 12, he says this. And now, Israel, what, the, what does the Lord your God require of you? This is the part that sometimes we don't read and understand enough. What, what do you want from me? He, this is what the children are asking. So God telling them, what, you, what do you want from us, God? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to love him. To serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Listen, there is a train of thought in, today, in today's society, and even before today, that it don't take all that. Now, that's, that's funny. We will give our whole life, 30 years, that's a, I'm, that's a lifetime. Yes, to a job. Yes, You're going to die. They won't feel your position. Yep. You will not be remembered. Oh, let me be clear. Yep. I will not be remembered. Yep. Let me, let me, I don't want, I don't want you to think. If it ain't your company and you didn't start it, I promise you, you will, you will not, not be remembered. Be remembered. All right. All right. The Bible says this in the book of Ecclesiastics. Now, this, this is really some food for thought. Solomon says, listen, you're going to die. And in all your possessions, they can go to somebody else. Yes, ma'am. Now, yes, now, my great grandfather, well, I know about him, he was a phenomenal. My, my daddy, daddy, was a great man. So, my, my daddy was, I think my dad, I don't know, my daddy was born kind of during the time of segregation, just to give you some context. So, that means my grandfather was before that, right? right? Now, the reason why I'm saying my granddaddy is great, my great granddaddy is a great man, because some kind of way, this man was able to get a hundred and 80 acres of land during that time. His son lived on the land, and now my uncles live on the land. What is the significance of it to me other than I know you're my granddaddy? I never met him. We don't have a relationship. No, but we don't have relationships other than me hearing about him. So, so, so what, what, what I'm saying is, if we'll do all that, if he did all that for his family, that's what we for, that's what forgive us, get about him. And it, it, I know it cost him his blood, sweat, and tears. I, it is, it's not just him, it's me. Just three generations from now, right? My, my great, 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 and you know me, they don't know no stories of me. But if, he, if we're willing to do all that, right, for a job, if we're willing to do all that for him to make sure three generations are, 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 are set, Right? The Bible says only the things that you do for Christ okay. will last. Right? Do you, do, you, do you know why? Because it's only, it's only between you and God. It's only between you and God. It's, it's not about anybody else. Thank God that God don't have no grandchildren. That would be horrible. Right? But even in then, this is the problem he keeps having. Am I not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jesus? Am I not him? I did it. Serving God does not happen on accident. Right. It's not an accident. Amen. Amen. You never come to the altar and then fire will fall from heaven and you, and you will go out and no, you walk it out. You walk this out. It's one day at a time. It's one step at a time. It's, it's the Bible verse at a time that you, you apply yes. to your yes. life. Yes. This is salvation. Work, work out. Your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. This is a living, I'm a living sacrifice for you, God. I'll do anything. I want to share this. 
the, we sung pre-sermon everything to me. I don't mind sharing this. I don't share a lot of, of my, again, that 1% of experiences. But the first time, the second time, I heard the honorable voice of God was right here, right here in this church. Mm -hmm. And I was singing everything to me. And somewhere between my heart and my mind, I meant it. Amen. And sure as I'm standing here right for you today, God okay. said, I am the savior of the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be honest. I was saying everything. I said, whoa. <laughs> yep. Yep. Whoa. Whoa. It will whoa you. Yes, it will. Whoa. Yes, it will. I wasn't expecting it. Yes. It wasn't audible. It was audible in a sense it filled the whole core of my being. I was yes. not able to explain that wow. until I heard somebody preaching here out about faith. And I was like, I had an experience. I'm not sure how to explain it, though. Yes. You feel every desire in that moment. Yes. Everything you're searching for right in that moment. Yes. This thing that we are looking for, I don't know what it is for you, but the thing that we're searching for, yes. whatever that thing is, we try to get it, we go, and we try, and we try, and we try. It take God one moment to satisfy you, like nobody else can. I, pr I promise you. Yes. I'm not preaching from a place of what I've simply read. I'm, I'm talking about what I've experienced. Yes. This is why the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, take, you got to take. If I tell you that Max Burgers is good, I can tell you I want to. I, can, I mean, I can tell it. I can, I can get it. I can preach to you until I can't preach no more. But until you experience it, all right. You won't understand it. That's right. This, 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 this is where we don't want to fall. God always wanted us to be a living sacrifice. Yeah. Listen, listen, it was never about the ceremonial and just simply doing what God required them to do is Levites. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to show you. You don't have to turn here. Isaiah 1, 8, 15, he says this. Hear the word of the Lord. You rulers of Sodom, give ear to the law of God. You people of Gomorrah, to what purpose is the multitude are your sacrifices to me, says the Lord. I've had enough of burnt offerings and rams and the fat of the fed cattle. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or goats. When you come to appear before me, who has required this from you, from your hand, to trample my courts? Bring me no more few sacrifices. Bring me no more empty sacrifices. Incense is an abomination to me. The new moons, the Sabbaths, and the calling of assemblies, I cannot endure iniquity and sacred meeting. Your, your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hates. They are trouble to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Listen, listen. God give the Levites these ordinances, these ceremonies. There is so many there. But what he tells them is, and the prophet tell them, God don't know that because y'all missed the point. Remember the scripture we read in Deuteronomy. He's telling them, I want your heart. Don't bring me your empty sacrifice. You can't have lawlessness in the sacred meeting and want me to bless you. We, we, it ain't going to work. That's, that's, not what I said. that's not what I told you to do. The first thing I told you was is to keep my commandments and to love me with all your heart. Now, everything else after that, I'm not concerned with it until we can get the heart issue fixed. Right. Now, I'm not going back to it, and we'll say, not God, you know, my heart, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. It don't take us. And I, the last time Pastor Cora afforded me, I'm sorry, Pastor Cora, I thank you for the opportunity. I'm so sorry. I'm so excited about giving the word of God. I do. I really appreciate it. Uh, I don't take it for granted to be able to share the word of God. Not at all. But we understand it so much. We understand it to a T. Not when it comes to God, but when it comes to us. Just what we have to keep in mind is that it's God who created us. So we know we can understand it. Then if it came from God, we know he definitely understands it. Yes. See, see, th th this is the thing. If somebody gives you an empty apology, the first thing out of our mouth is, I don't want that apology. No. Oh, but when it comes to God, he knows my heart. 
Why do you think you are the way you are? Whether you believe in God or not, it is innately in you to understand certain things because he's God and you created in his image. Whether you acknowledge it or not, it does not matter. You understand spiritual principle because he created us in his image. Yes. This, is, this is what David says. In a very real way, God wants your heart. Oh, the, the Bible says, give God the sacrifice of praise, which is what? The fruit of your lips. I've always wondered, how do we get to a point? He says in that way, they, many will say in my name, I prophesy, I preach, I mean, I was thinking of your name. He said, but I'm going to say to him, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. You worker of lawlessness. Okay, God, I told you you know my heart, but I went and I did everything else. You see, God is not, God is not void of fulfilling his promise, no matter who the vessel is. Be, 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 because it's not about them. It's about God. God is being true to his word, yeah. right? So, God forbid, I can get up here and preach to you today. Go out there and live any kind of way. And somebody in here can be saved and set free and delivered. i tell you what I'm going to do, though. This is why the Apostle Paul said, listen, I discipline myself. I bring my body under control. That after I preach to many, I myself will become a castaway. So, as I get up here and I preach and I give the word of God, and I go out and I live any kind of way on that great day, whenever it is, when I die, or God Bring me back, my brother. What have you done? Look what I preached. I did it. Get away from me. You was a worker of iniquity, brother. Because he understands. You understand. You understand exactly what God wants and requires. Yes. We understand. We know. Why? Because we can look at it in our own personal life mm -hmm. and see where we wanted the same exact thing. We can look at it in our personal life and we allow something to happen because we thought the outcome would be better than what we want, what we pre pre preconceived what it would be. We can look at our life where we have control or autonomy over a situation and we allow certain things to happen because in our humanism, we can work it for our good, right? So if you can understand that, then we can understand who the most high God is. The Bible says God is the spirit and those who worship him must worship him. In spirit and in truth. Amen. This is what David says. It's not that God, he meant what he said. When he said, hey, I'm giving you these ordinances. It is your business to keep them. All right. But first, number one, remember your reasonable service. Your well thought out service. You put a lot of thought into this, right? And so God, take the, the food of my lips, sacrifice and praise when I come to the house of God. I've had a rough week. And I say, Lord, you're worthy. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I magnify you. Lord, there's none like you, right? Because I'm willing myself in spite of my situation. It's not because I want God, it's not because I want God to change my situation. Yes. It's simply because he is God. This is why we serve God. Mm -hmm. Come on now. You can look in the scripture. Uh -huh. Now, listen, listen. I want to help myself. This, this, this is what I've learned through studying the word of God. God gives the Old Testament, and then we have the New Testament. What we can see is, is that it fits just like this. I promise you, if it's just like this, I can take this scripture here, right? I present you there before the mother of God. Present your body to the sacrifice. I'm going to read it to you in the Old Testament. Psalms 51, 16, 19. We know it is that the David stole the man's wife and killed him. He couldn't just do one. He did both. He said, I'm going to steal your wife, then I'm going to kill you. But this is what David says. He says, for you do not desire sacrifice, or else I will give it to you. You do not delight in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. Mm -hmm. These, O oh Lord, you will not despise. Mm -hmm. Do good in your good pleasure to Zion. Build the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased. Then you will be pleased. After what? I have offered you a broken spirit, a repentant spirit, and a contrite heart, a heart that's ready to serve you. Then, he said, then you will be pleased with sacrifices of righteousness, mm -hmm. with burnt offering and whole burnt offering, then you will offer bulls on your altar. This is how we get to the part where, where, the, where, the, where the Spirit says, hey, they serve me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Even in our human ability, there's a level of discernment. Going back to the, the empty apology, you know it when it's coming, especially on a job. <laughs> I know here we get come to apology. I would rather you not apologize to me than, than to insult me. Now, now how do God feel? If, if you feel that way, how does the most high feel? This, in a real way, this is why the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. Now, it's no, 
can everybody know if you don't know? I absolutely, absolutely love worship music. I love worship. I love worshiping God. I love the music. I cannot live any kind of way and get up here and expect to experience the presence of God. It's not going to happen. All right. Oh, yeah. It's not going to happen. It's yeah. not going to happen. Okay. I can't go live any kind of way and say, oh, God, I thank you, Jesus. Oh, do it for me. <laughs> you haven't talked to me all week. Well, you have not willed yourself to me all week, and now it's, you do appear on Sunday, and you want an awesome encounter with me. You only, there ain't no relationship there. Again, we go out, we we'll be like, oh, God, you can't be that way. Okay. I'll tell you what, I had a friend I hadn't talked to in years. <laughs> he texted me one day, brother, I need some gas money. Brother, can't help you. <laughs> well, I don't know what you think this is, brother. We ain't talked in years, right? We ain't talked. Right? There's no relation, and I do mean years. There's no relationship there. But yet I have expectation. God, if you, if we can understand it. If we can understand it, this is exactly what God wants. A living sacrifice. All right. This is the problem. This is what happened with, the, with, with, with King Saul. He went and offered him a sacrifice. He said, oh, God, sacrifice. Because the prophet taken a little bit too long. Then, the, then, 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 you know what the prophet said to him? It is better to be obedient than to offer a sacrifice. Literally, don't offer the offering if it ain't in your heart. Because if it was in your heart, you would have waited for me. This is why the Bible says, I wait patiently for God. Yes. God wants our heart. And when God has our heart, because our heart is the altar, it's the thing that God look at and God can say, I have a relationship with this person. Yeah, we saw him. Like, hey, God, see, yes, yes, son, I see you. I have a relationship with you. But the relationship cannot be out of need or necessity because that's not a relationship. Again, in a very real way, we understand that it cannot be out of need and necessity. This life that we live in Christ is literally going to cost you everything. I promise you it's going to cost you everything. Listen, going back to my where, where I really wanted to be and what I really want to talk about is us being the salt of the earth. And in my study, what I, what I saw that God wanted is he means when he calls the salt of the earth, you are the living sacrifice. He says it three times. He, he preached. Now, um, Mark, Luke, and Matthew, those gospels are in harmony, right? John is the only gospel that started in the beginning because the Bible says that John was filled with the Holy Spirit while still in his mother's womb, womb, meaning that John had a revelation about the eternity of Jesus Christ. The other disciples did not have that because they were not filled with the Holy Spirit. So, 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 so this, is, this is Matthew, Luke, and Mark, where Jesus is preaching. He doesn't say this in John, again, because John already understands. He already knows, already have understanding, because that's what, now that's the purpose of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, the prophesying, and all that, that's great. We're going to put it to the side. The purpose of the Holy Spirit is to lead you in all truth and righteousness. That, that's what he came to do, right? Then now, again, 99% of our relationship is fasting, prayer, and reading, discipline. The 1% is going to be supernatural, and you're not going to be able to explain it. You know why? Because simply, he's God. And he's going to he give you those experiences so that you strengthen your faith in him, and then you can continue to walk, right? It, it, it makes you hungry, it makes it make you thirsty. What is this I experience? Now, now, now what, what it should do, it should prompt you to dig and deep and dive in the scripture. I want some more of that. What we call this is the Shekinah glory of God. It's his tangible presence. Yes. But it's his word he sent, where his presence dwell. This is what he told, and he, oh man, he says so much in those first five books. <laughs> He said, listen, I want you to build an ark. He gave him the layout how to build an ark. Then when he said, I put my word, put, put these commandments in the ark, he says, now the appointed time, I'm going to come and I'm going to speak with you. Oh, what I heard was, <laughs> put the word in the ark and at the appointed time, I'm going to come and speak with you. The, the, right? The challenge is, get to a paper Bible. Because at the appointed time, when your heart is repented, right, when your spirit is broken because of your sin, he is going to come and speak his presence, the wells, and his word, and it's his presence that changed our lives. All right. All right. Okay. Matthew 5, I'm, I'm closing, I'm closing. Matthew 5, 1 10, Jesus gives us, you don't have to turn there, he gives us the Beatitudes. 
right? Blessed, he says, blessed are the, the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. At the end, he says, you are the salt of the earth, right? That's one instance. The second instance is in Luke 14, 25, 33, uh, 33, 34, verse 35, he ended with saying, but you are the salt. In this instance, God is talking about forsaking all. And then this is the scripture where, where, where he says, if you love uh, mama more than me, if you love daddy more than me, if you love, he said, if you don't hate. Now, I think that word is appropriate, not because he wants you to hate anybody. What he's saying is, if you're not willing to forsake all and come after me, he said, you are not worthy of the kingdom. So then he says, you are the salt of the earth. And then in Mark, he said, he talks about offense. He says, it's better for one person uh, for you to offend the, the least one of these, That's right? right. Uh, and, and if you offend them, then you should tie a millstone to your neck and, and throw yourself into the, into the river, right? He was talking about, listen, people who hurt, like you purposely put a stumbling block. You, you knew my weakness. You knew I struggled with, with, with alcohol. And you go bring me a six pack and ask me do I want to drink. Of course I want to drink. That's what he's talking about, right? But then after that, he says what? You are the salt of the earth, right? Right? So he go, he keep going back. He keeps saying, hey, you are the salt of the earth. So then what's the thought? The thought process from these three scriptures is that I take these things, right? And I put them in my heart. I keep them in my heart. And then I apply them to my life. And that's what makes me the living sacrifice. God went a heart. To be a living sacrifice, it will cost you everything. In John 15, Jesus is talking. And he says, listen, if they kept my words, they will keep your words. He said, if they persecuted me, they will persecute, persecute you. The big picture is that Jesus died for the remission of sins. The Pharisees and the Sadducees did not like him because he said he was the king of the Jews. So then when you look at it, not from a God perspective, but from a Pharisee and the Sadducee perspective, they simply killed him because they didn't like what he was saying. That's it. When the prophets, when they slaughtered the prophets, it's not because they did anything wrong. I don't like the way you think, and I don't want that train of thought to rub off on anybody else because I know the way I think and the way we see God. And we don't need you messing that up, brother. John the Baptist lost his life because he told uh, King Herod, he said, hey, brother, you didn't mess around and marry your, your uncle wife. You know that's wrong. And then, he, and, then, and then Herod said, ooh, baby, what you want for your birthday? She said, what you want? She said, bring me his head on a platter because he can't correct me. It was because the train of thought, what, what I'm saying is these guys were living sacrifices. It, co it literally cost them their, it literally cost them their lives. This is what our scripture says. He said, listen, if you lose your life for my sake, you will gain it. And if you try to find your life without me, you will lose it. God love us. You have called us to be a living sacrifice. I, I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, a body of faith, that we present our bodies, yes. a living sacrifice, which is your reasonable service. This, I, I'm a, in, the, in the Hebrew, what I love about when you study your word, and then, you know, when you, when you go this week, and the way, the way you study your word is that I promise you, I, mean, maybe I can make this promise. There's nothing that you're going through today that has not already been experienced. Amen. I, 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 I Amen. promise you. I Amen. promise you. And so what you have to do is you have to go seek it out. Yep. Where in the Bible is this? Uh -huh. What did this person do? What was their heart? And how did God respond to it? You got, you got, so you got to look for two things. You got to look for the person who pleased God. I and mean, you got to look for the person who did not please God. You want Because now I can contrast. What was God pleased with? What was he not pleased with? In the Hebrew mind, they were very concrete. They don't believe in concepts. They, they, they want concrete. They want something they can relate to. So in the Hebrew mind, heart is love. Heart, the, the first letter of the word rep represents a shepherd's staff, which is, sign, which is a sign of authority. And the second letter represents the house or tent, meaning within, the authority within us, the heart. Not the one that pumped blood. The heart is the authority within. And this is what God wants from you. He wants your heart. He wants your mind. Because wherever your mind will, your body will follow. Amen. When we look at this scripture, he says what? He says, uh, 
Um, out of it flows the issues of life. Keep your heart with all diligence. Yes. Yes. Out of it flows the issues of life. Before he says that, do you know what he's talking about? He is telling you to put the word in your heart. Then he says, keep it with all diligence. Because out of it flows the issues of life. As we go through life, this is what we use. This is the only, this is the fight that we're fighting. It's not that the devil has authority because he has been defeated according to the word of God. What happens, this is how he gives his authority. We go through our, our, our differences and our changes and our woes in life. And then we lose our faith in God, right? And at the point that you lose your faith in God, now he can come. Once you, once you lose your faith, once you lose your belief, once you lose that, he got, hey, I got free reign in your life now because the negative thoughts start. I feel defeated at start. Listen, not only do you need an altar and a willing mind for the sacrifice, but you need the fire of God. The fire of God is the Holy Spirit. This is why when we come to the altar and pass the court, say, put it on the altar. Whatever the sin, whatever the sin is, God will burn it up and give you a new desire. Okay? Whatever you're going through, God will give you. Listen, he will, he not will, listen, the Bible says in John 17, he said, listen, I do not pray that you take them out of the world, but I pray that you keep them from the evil one. So I'm telling you today, God is taking you out of your situation. Come on. God will strengthen you. To God will you. encourage you. The Bible says, yes. think about strange yes. when you fall into diamonds of what? Temptation. Yes. Knowing this is working. Patience in you. Right. It is uncomfortable. Yes. I, don't, I ain't going to lie to you. It, it hurts sometimes. Yes. sometimes. But God will strengthen you. Yes. Yes. He will give you everything you need. Oh, yes. If you want to be kept by God, he, is, he will keep you. Oh, yes, he yes. is. He will deliver. I'm, I'm telling you, mm -hmm. you meet God in His Word. It don't matter how good anybody preach. You meet God yes. in His Word. You meet God in His Word. Yes. His, his Word is His final authority. He won't go against His Word. He will lead you in all truth and righteousness. Yes. Oh, yes. I pray that God. Listen, when I when, when God was calling me to salvation, there were nights I woke up crying. I'm like, what is this? Like, what's this? I woke up, I'll never forget one night I woke up, I was literally crying. I said, Lord, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Okay. Just to go find the Psalms 51. But I had a desire for God. I had a desire for God. You're not going to understand everything when you first start. And as you go, I don't understand everything now. I don't have, I don't understand everything. But God is God. Amen. 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 I hope to be a blessed today. Amen. Amen. just to listen to worship music. I'm like, oh, let me get back. The main thing is the main thing. I got to get back to this Bible study. But I really pray that God wake you up in the middle of the night and that he give you a yearning and a desire to be with him because it will sustain you through life. And that you will yourself to God and you allow him to make you a living sacrifice. It don't look like what the world look like because he would call us to look like the world look like. He called us to be that. That is through and by his Holy Spirit that he will sustain us. Right? Amen. Lord, we thank you, God. I, I thank you for your word, Father God. And I ask you, Lord, to in my life and in my heart, Lord, and in our hearts to let it fall on good ground. But we ask you, Lord, to let us, we want to mix it with faith. We, we want to apply it to our lives. We want people around us changed, Father God. We want people life changed because they can see that we truly are the salt of the earth. Father God, we are a city set on the hill, Father God. We ask you, Lord, to strengthen us, Father God. 
and, and give us the courage, Father God, and let us be yielded to your Holy Spirit so you can have your way in our lives, Father God. Lord, help us with our unbelief, Father God. Help us when we don't understand and we don't know, Father God. We ask you, Lord, just to simply help us, Father God. But Lord, I ask you, Lord, to place the fire of the Holy Spirit in our lives, Father God. Because you, you are a witness. You are the witness of who God is, Father God. You bring us understanding. Lord, you bring us correction in our life, Father God. Lord, I thank you and I honor you. We praise you and we magnify you simply because you are God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Praise God. Come on, let's give the honor of God. I'm going to have a call for the word. Amen. I couldn't help but think about his mom and how she has been instrumental as well as his dad, but it's something he said about his mom one day. And she's just that, uh, that, that protective mom. Uh, but I could see why she protected Josh. I can see why she was protecting him because God has blessed him. Amen? Amen. It was something that was related to another situation, but mother, you've done a good job. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We want to bless the Lord in our giving, and if you can go to your wallets and your purses. Amen. You thought it was like a website, right? No. Go to your wallets and your purses. And you can go to the website as well, abidingfaithcc.org. Okay. Or you can go do the Zelle. All right. And they may have to put it on the screen for you if you're watching virtually. But give this morning and bless the Lord in your giving. You can raise your hands. The ushers are there to serve you. Amen. They're also giving you your thank you cards for your uh, support for the Rice Campaign. We did a wonderful job in the Rice Campaign. Amen. Amen. We had a lot of uh, outside support as well as locally church. So we thank God so much and some churches in the city as well. So we really praise God for the Rice Campaign and for your giving. And we don't want to stop our giving, Haiti's in need, and we want to make sure we continue giving. So you can still give to Haiti, all right? This church believes in helping those that are in need. Amen. Just earmark it on the envelope. This is for Haiti because we're going to do another fundraiser for them at the end of the year, toward the end of the year. But God bless. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give your best, give your tithe, give your offering. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. If you're watching virtually, I mean you're giving virtually, go ahead and give your best. Amen. Or tithe your offering. Go to our website. The Lord will bless you. There's a public Wi-Fi for the church now. So I think it says abiding faith public. So you can go to the website on your phone and give through the that, uh, that Joe, Josh, I need to come back up here because you, you got to bless this offering and do the benediction. You can bring your offering. Reverend Stokes said you can bring it.
Anybody else think we do? Lord, we ask you to bless us all. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to return it to us in the spiritual way. We ask you, Lord, to where we do need increase, that you give us financial literacy, that you give us an idea that can change our life and the life around us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We have any uh, visitors? I'm so sorry. I, do we have any visitors today? Any visitors today? Yes, we do. Yes, sir. What's your name? Kalina. We have Kalina in the house. Anybody else? Oh. <laughs> we have Miss Cora's sister. Miss Annette. Let's give him a big amount of faith. Well. I'm sorry, I apologize. Let's give Miss Washington a big amount of thanks. All hearts and minds clear. I really, I really pray that the word of God bless you today. God bless you. You know, I, I, you know, anytime I, you know, study or I preach the word, I'm, I'm really preaching to myself or speaking out of my own mind. Because that's the only way the word of God is effective. And I, and I really do pray that God wake us up, all of us up in the middle of the night, follow the Holy Spirit, and change our life and speak to us. I can tell you so many stories. There, there are things that the Holy Spirit woke me up and told me that I did not understand why. And literally, and so I, there's something the Holy Spirit told me that I didn't understand what he was saying until I got married. And it was literally years before I got married. I'm like, why are you telling me this? Brother, I don't even have a girlfriend right now. Like, what are you talking about? But when I got married, I was like, oh, this is what you were saying to me. I, I, I get it. I, I, I understand. So I really pray that, that we allow the Holy Spirit and be willing to allow the Holy Spirit to minister to our life. Lord, we thank you for this day. Brother God, we thank you for your anointing, Brother God, that rests on each and every one of us, that is in us, Father God. We ask you, Lord, to let us be open to everything that you want to do in our lives. Father God, I ask you, Lord, to give us such a hunger and a thirst for you that we cannot ignore it, Father God. I ask you, Lord, that you give us your burden to have, call us to have an intimate relationship with you so we can be heart to heart and mind to mind, Father God. We pray, Lord, for a successful week, and we pray for disciplined believers that do the things necessary, God, to have a successful week, and that you are the, the sufficiency, Father God, and you are the source of our strength as we go through this week. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. And one last thing, the Daniel Fast seven days started today.